Hey everybody, uh, this is Bao. Welcome to another chest improvement video, number 17. And today we're doing forks. Uh, to the new subscribers to my channel, thank you for subscribing. That's very nice of you. I hope you enjoy the videos. Um, yeah, if you want things changed or you want me to discuss certain things, please let me know in the comments of my videos. I'd be more than happy to you know, change up the things I'm doing or talk about how you see my progression going and whatnot. But yeah, as I said, forks today, as I promised, we are practicing or focusing on breadth of knowledge in the beginning more than specific mastery of um, specific tactical motifs. Especially with tactical motifs and especially with the kind of training we're trying to do, I think it's wise right now to try to get as much of the all around done before yada 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 yeah you get the idea. So we're gonna do forks. So let's look at our forks set right now. They're two hundred and fifteen. Uh before we delete and remake just to see if the chest problems work that way, why don't we oh god. Why don't we try changing it from here and see if it works? No, personal set still isn't on here. I must be doing something wrong for it not to show up in the chest tempo beta, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So what we're gonna have to do is go into custom sets, manage sets, and there were 215 left. Let's delete the forks. In fact, while we're here, let's delete pins and forks because we probably not going to get there for a long time <coughs> and we will do a new search la 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 we will do one moves and we will add the tactical what oh here we go uh, ch -ch -ch forks and we will do a search what do we get 318 previous attempts problems never got right do another search 214 awesome we'll create the set folks and we'll set as current and we'll create okay and the idea will be we'll do forks this video and no matter how well I do next video we will be moving on to uh, whatever the third tactical motif we want to try out is currently I have no idea we can take a look quick look here or attraction, blocking, capturing, desperado sounds cool. Discovered attacks. I've always loved discovered attacks, so maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Discovered attacks are kind of similar to pins. I feel like pins kind of are a foundation that help discovered attacks happen. Double checks are good, similar to forks as well. Uh, hanging piece, interference, that sounds really good. A couple videos ago when we looked at it, there were some other ones we wanted to try. Quiet move, sacrifice. Sacrifices are always fun. Simplification, trap piece. Trap piece might be a good one. Because uh, especially at my level, there are potentials for trap pieces all the time that I miss. Mm, overloading. Overloading, I think, is a very good one. Um, yeah. Next time, we're going to do overloading. I feel like that one definitely is something that a lot of beginners strain with. They have a difficulty because they're just good enough as beginners to know not to hang their pieces, but they're not good enough to know that some pieces might have too much going on for them. So yeah, we'll do that. So that's good. Training, chess tactics. Let's make it happen. <coughs> so forks today, and we're going to do 25. As always. So let's see what kind of forks we can do. Um, so I think the idea here is that we can do a double attack. 
with whatever pieces are in G3, well, the king specifically, and whatever pieces on G or C3. So the idea might be bishop takes knight on C3, rook takes knight on C3, then queen comes in for the same attack again, and we'll be able to take the rook. So we trade minor pieces, then we get a rook. Uh, this is a fairly closed-ish situation anyway, so I'm okay with losing the bishop for the knight, especially if we're going to get a rook after that. So I think that's the answer. And here we go. On our way today, and there's only 215, so I guess it's okay that we're moving away from this, whatever this is. Uh, this looks like some free pieces. Knight to e7, uh, royal fork on the g8, king on g8, and uh, the rook on c8. Queen can't just take, because if queen takes, then there's rook takes rook on c8. And then king's going to have to move anyway, so we win a rook. Let's calculate some other lines that can happen. Rook or knight takes bishop e7. That's a check, so king has to move, then we get the rook that way. So either way, I think we win a rook. Either way, I think we win a rook. Because this is a royal uh, fork, there is immediacy. There's no zwish and zugs that can happen. And for who, those of you who don't know, zwish and zug just in between. Move. Something that can be played before the reaction of another move that an opponent might have made. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, that was pretty bad. I guess that wasn't the right idea. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I see. So was my calculation incorrect then? Was there not something good going on? Go, if he moves here. Can I not do this? What's the cost of O? Oh. oh, I'm a retard. I'm so stupid. Why am I so stupid? For some reason, I think this is another awful beginner mistake that people make. People forget that the knight can move backwards and take a piece. And take it to pieces. Ah, uh, so yeah, that was a failure on my part. My part to see that there was an optimal move for that knight. I'm so ashamed. Eh, happens. Should have been more careful in all of my calculations. Should have seen what kind of defenses the other player had, especially when it's a forced move like that. It just takes an extra little second just to see, just to see what's going on. So let's be a little more careful here. Let's uh, be a little more careful. I don't know why I'm doing the terrible, terrible Italian accent. <coughs> okay, so what do we have here? We are black. We are equal on pieces. Our king might be in a little bit of a threatening position. So what are we trying to do here? We can do knight takes knight on c3, pawn takes knight on c3. So then this knight would be here, and then pawn takey takey. And then rook takes. Pawn takey takey. Pawn to b2. <coughs> rook to d1. Rook takes pawn. Rook to b1. Hmm. Eh. Pawn takey takey. Rook takes first. Rook to. Rook to d1. Hmm. Hmm. Is that the way we want to take this puzzle? I'm not sure. What other things do we have here? There's rook takes knight, pawn takey takey, and then knight to c3, check, king to d2, pawn to b2. Yeah, we could promote that way. 
Is that the right way to go, you think? What about rook takes? Rook takes check. King moves. Rook can't go there. Pawn takes. Still takes. Hmm. It seems like if we do trade the rook for the knight, which is less than favorable, uh, it does come to our advantage, however, because it seems like there is a quick promotion path for that pawn on b3. On the b file? Whereas if we take with a knight here, it's not necessarily quick, and in fact, I don't think we get to promote. Uh, rook takes, pawn takes, mm, pawn goes up, rook to d1, then there's knight takes c2 as well. That seems pretty fucking dope. Well, let's do it. Yeah. And then, whoop. There's also this, but that's no good either. Yeah. Cool. Neat. Awesome. Fucking fantastic. <clears throat> um, okay. What is going on? Black's just moved. We are white. Let's at least not embarrass ourselves by trying to figure out the puzzle for the wrong color, as we've done before. Uh, chaka chaka chaka. Is there any kind of sweet, sweet fork that we can do? Uh, our bishop is in a little bit of an interesting position. So, like, we can do rook takes knight here on c5. Then is there some kind of double attack we can do from there? Doesn't seem like it. What about bishop takes? So knight on b3 would be good. So what about rook takes knight, rook takes rook c5, knight to d3, forking the bishop and the knight, bishop takes bishop, knight takes rook, doesn't seem great. And it's knight versus bishop at the end? Hmm. Hmm. Alternatively, there's bishop takes first. Bishop takes, rook takes. Bishop takes, rook takes. Then there's though there's no knight to b3, because knight to b3 is met with knight to b3. So get rid of the knight. Rook takes rook, c5. Rook takes knight, rook takes rook, c5. If we do bishop takes at that point, rook just go over to th uh, a5. And if we try anything with the knight, then there's always rook back to s uh, b5. That doesn't seem quite it. Are we in a losing position where ending up knight versus bishop is the right place? Let's calculate that line again. Rook takes knight, rook takes rook c5, bishop to b3, bishop takes bishop, knight takes rook. That looks fairly easy and even, and we lose uh, a pawn at the end of that. So that don't look so good. That don't look so good. Hmm. Don't see it. I don't see it. Hmm. 
Oh, I'm silly. What about pawn just to b4? Ha ha ha. Pawn advance. Great. Pawn advance, double attack on the bishop and the knight. Oops, one of these two pieces is going to have to take. When that happens, we can just... Uh, if the rook takes, we get a free knight with the rook. If the bishop takes, then we can do take the knight first and then take the bishop. Wait, let's calculate all of these out. Uh, I think this is the winning move, but just to be sure, b4, b4, bishop takes. Oh, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. So yeah, okay, cool. Yep. Oh, what? Oh, I see. And then we can do it. So even though my thought was half there, the more efficient idea would be to take first, force the rook to go there. Neither of these pieces can deal with this, so I'm going to win something for free at that point. So that's pretty cool. What would have happened if I had just gone straight there? Then that happens. So, yeah, that's still good, but I guess the other move was slightly better. Was it? I should have calcul I should have counted. Uh, dun, dun. We would have been up a pawn. So, yeah, mine sacrifices the pawn while the right move, the right move, the better move, uh, you get to keep the pawn. So that's good. Okay, let's see. What do I have here? Um, this is fairly easy. Rook takes bishop. Pawn takes rook. Then we have queen to d7 for a attack on the double attack on the king on g7 and the rook on c8. There is an in-between move, however. Rook takes bishop, queen to c2, king to h2. Now this comes with less power, the queen to d7. So that's not great. That ain't uh, great. Oh, I guess, however, if there is queen uh, c1 check, rook can just come down to e1 again, thus saving the rook from all of that. Because my worry was rook takes bishop e6, queen c1 check, king is forced to move to h2, but instead we can just rook back to e1 if queen takes and knight takes. So there we go. Four out of five. Huzzah. What are we going to? 25? <sighs> okay. White's just made a move. They're pushing for promotion. That looks pretty sick. Sicky, sicky, sick. We can push for our own promotion, but our pawn isn't defended. And there are two controllers for E2, so that's not great. Also, if bishop takes knight, then they can just push for promotion once more. No more heaven. Trying to see what kind of potential forks there could be. So this whole dark square diagonal from G1 to AH, A7, AH, 
Whoa, g1 to a7 looks very enticing for my bishop, if my bishop was on d4. That looks very good. So let's see here. Let's uh, calculate the line. Uh, bishop takes. Pawn to b7. Bishop. <clears throat> no, nope, that's not fast enough. Not quite fast enough. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Excuse me. not entirely sure what we have here there is rook to b uh, b8 which is also an interesting way to defend but looking at their pieces it's kind of hard for them to deal with that and gives us time for like rook b7 maybe bishop they can't immediately do bishop, uh, well they could, they could do bishop to uh, d5. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, but then we have bishop to d4, pawn to b7 is met with, <coughs> bishop takes a7, oh, got a frog in my throat, or it's dry, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It ain't good. Okay, well, let's calculate the most basic line. Bishop takes knight, pawn to b7, knight to knight to d1, king to king to g2. No king to g2. Bishop. No king to g2. Is that checkmate? That is... Very, oh, no, no, no. There's bishop to f1 on uh, rook to d1. Okay, so bishop takes knight, rook to d1, bishop to f1. That is, like, the only move he has. Uh. At that point, what do we have here? Bishop on f1, rook on d1. Our bishop's still on a8 pawn and rook on b6 and a7, respectively. Knight's gone. Is our bishop still there? Yeah, our bishop is still on c3 as well. Hmm. Huh. <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting. Then bishop to d4. So take. Uh, oh. Never mind. We don't have this bishop line. Mm. Wrongly calculated. Incorrect. Incorrect. Take. Move. Check. King can go there. So start with the king going there, or the rook going there, but then that's just taken by the knight. Not great. Not great. Mm, I feel like we're so close to something good. So close. What if we move bishop to e3? Bishop to e3. Probably met by bishop to d5. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, rook takes knight. <clears throat> All on d5. Then there's promotion soon coming. Yeah. That's not great either. Huh. Don't see the fork. See the mate potential. I'm glad I saw the mate potential at least. 
because oftentimes I stop looking at the mate potential in these kind of tactical motif ones which is bad should always be looking for the mate potential um, rook b8 is a good defense honestly I feel it to be a pretty decent defense rook b8 but that definitely is not what they want us to look at. And on such an open board, the calculations do become a little bit trickier for me. I don't know why the open board makes it harder for me. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Pawn to b7. Check. King to g2. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Pawn to e2 can be met with knight to... <sighs> knight to e2. Knight takes e2. So we don't have the pin with uh, bishop to d4. So we have to get rid of this knight, but then that allows for the pawn to move one more. Can pawns take sideways? Wouldn't that be nice? That probably wouldn't help us in this situation, actually. There is rook to d7 as well, but that doesn't look like the right move either. Oh, that's not. That's not even a move. Wow, my brain is getting flustered. Yeah, <laughs> rook to d7. How about rook takes rook? Hey, yo! Nope, 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 nope. Where is the fork as well? I don't see the fork. Bishop on d3 would be the fork, but that's not going to happen. This little buddy moves too fast. Too fast, too quick, too furious. d1. Bishop takes, pawn, d1, king, f2. Bishop has to force itself at that end, I think. Bishop takes pawn, rook takes, and then if we had a light squared bishop, it would be delicious, but we don't. Uh, rook to c1, try to move this bishop away, but it's going to try to keep that e2 square heavily defended. Uh, that's definitely not the answer here. Ugh. Hmm. I really, really don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh. Immediately taking the knight seems most effective since it seems to have a lot of coordination with a lot of the rows or the diagonals being open. My most passive move I think is b7 but I like it a lot. I think for the sake of this puzzle I will take that knight though and then we'll just have to move on because 11 minutes in now and I don't know the answer to this one. It's probably wrong. No, it's right. I don't know why it's right. Let's take a... I'm definitely missing something. 
I am definitely missing something. What is the answer here? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Oh, wow. All right, I kind of understand, but I'm not fully buying it. I feel like there's no way it's that simple. So if we did try to press this, then in turn we can do that. What, well, what if we don't take? What if we just do that? Oh, wow, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Now I fully buy it. That is the one line I was wondering about. So weakness in this problem, just my calculation for a more open, slightly end game board. I think that was the issue here. I think if we're going to be talking about things that I need practice with, a bit more of this promotion and end game situations, Definitely, definitely needs a bit of work. That's very cool puzzle. Uh, very cool once it's played out. Very clear. I got that one right technically, but I'm four out of six now. I've gotten two wrong so far because I did not understand that puzzle at all. That's uh, that is oof, oof. I did not get that one. Okay, what do we have here? Um, we have potentially bishop takes. Bishop takey take. But then there's knight takes. So what if we get rid of this knight first with something like knight rook takes knight, knight takes knight, then bishop takes. So in that situation, we have queen to f2 defending the bishop. That seems pretty decent. Am I missing something? I mean, I'm down a rook. Ah, I'm down two points. Traded the knight for the rook. That doesn't quite seem like the puzzle. The rook sacrifice on the knight might be part of the puzzle. But the bishop takes... Not feeling it just yet. Not feeling it. I mean, potentially we could win a pawn by doing bishop takes, knight takes, f4, rook takes, d3. That doesn't seem that good either, though. King is in a precarious situation. I guess to be fair, both of our kings are in slightly precarious situations. Wish this bishop was doing a little bit more. Hmm. Rook takes knight e3, knight takes rook e3, bishop takes f4, king to queen to f2, queen takes f3, rook to e1, knight takes rook. So, uh, yeah, six points for five points. I could do that. Actually, six points for seven, or five points for seven points. Seven points for five points. I know how to do math. 
Well, technically, rook, it doesn't have to be that way, right? Rook takes knight, knight takes rook, e3, uh, bishop takes f3, queen to f2, queen takes c3, then there's bishop takes f3, uh, pawn takes knight, then there's rook to e, uh, e1, or d rook to e1. At which point, where the fuck are we? Wow, that is a lot of stuff that's happened. We would have a pawn on f3 that's undefended. There would be a knight on e3. Queen would be on f2. Our queen would be on c3. Uh, let's say the d file rook moved to e1. Or actually the f Mm, yeah, the D one. Um, we would still be down by a point at that point. It's not great. It's not good. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Very interesting. We would still have a rook on F8 as well. So at that point, if we do bishop takes knight, then rook takes rook takes knight. Hmm. No, that doesn't look good. So that's a rather long calculation, but it doesn't seem fruitful. Maybe I'm calculating it wrong because it's so long, but it doesn't seem like the right choice. I wonder if rook takes knight is the right way to go. Also, I don't really understand the fork in the situation. Meow, meow. Hmm. Oh boy. These ones have been very calculation heavy. Like my neighbor upstairs just did a little movie move. Rook takes e3, knight takes e3. Nothing good to do with the knight just yet. Hmm. <sighs> Bishop takes seems these. Is there a reason why queen to f2 actually doesn't work? Potentially because of a knight? No, I don't see it. I don't see it. Hmm. <sighs> Potentials for mate seem so good as well. God damn. Huh. Bishop on C8 doing a bit of nothing. B7 would be nice. Rook takes, knight takes, if it was on B7, then we could do something like a knight to somewhere. Double attack on the bishop. Queen takes, bishop takes, king. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Mm. 
the rook takes move seems the only viable move, but similar to the last puzzle, I don't see a real opening after that. Potentially maybe because I'm not seeing a discovered option like in the last puzzle? But that doesn't seem like this case here. Hmm. If we make the queen take the bishop here, that could be good somehow. Somehow. But with the pieces that we're playing with, that doesn't look like the option that's possible. Rook takes, knight takes e3, bishop takes, queen to f3, knight to g4. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But then queen can just take. <laughs> Not interesting anymore. Mm. Mm. But if queen takes and bishop takes, and then what? This line is still defended by the bishop. That's not that great. I'm still down two points, or one point. Doesn't seem like it. Rook takes, knight takes, e3. Pennsylvania. Bishop takes f4. Queen to f3. Knight moves away for potential discovered attack. doesn't look good either. Boy, this puzzle's hard. This puzzle's difficile. Hmm. Hmm. Knight takes, rook takes, knight takes, e3. There is straight up queen to c3 as well. That's pretty decent, but I mean, I can definitely make up on the pawns, which is pretty cool, but rook's so strong. Losing rook so bad. And also there's queen takes g4, which is the only defender for my knighty knight. Oh boy. Well, it's been about 11 minutes, so I guess we should move on. The only real candidate move I've been looking at this whole time is this one. Um, maybe I should have looked at other ones, but... No, it was the right one. I just didn't see how it was. That's a shame. I really wish I was good enough to see what happens after these. And then... Wh what I why is that bad? Oh, okay. Okay. Huh. Uh, I can't take that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't see that knight move. That's a very, very good knight move there. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Just got to work on my calculations a little bit. Why can't I do that? That seems good. Oh, because of that. So, had the right idea, saw the potential, but didn't realize that after this, there was that, which would be great. Damn. Oh, so three wrong? Oof, this is hard. Well, that's fine. This next one is really easy. Uh, rook to d3. Attack on king and knight. Whatever the king does, I can just take that. If rook comes to c4, I can just take with my pawn. Game's chest tempo is feeling sorry for me now. 
<laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> Let's see here. What do we have? Can't feel sorry for myself all day. Why can't I take that queen? I want that queen. That queen looks delicious. But if I take the queen, then there is knight to d4, which begs the question, why didn't they just go to knight or bishop to d4 first? That looks really good. Bishop d4, queen takes, rook takes, knight takes. Either way, still losing some things. Hmm. But now that they've moved over there first, I have a chance to strike. Should I not take the queen? Taking the queen seems pretty dope. Pretty dope. Potentially I could just take the bishop first as well. Just to get rid of the threat. What are we left with at the end of it? Oh, he has two minor pieces, right? So, take, boop, take, boop. Uh, and then we'd be left on equal terms instead of being down by one. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I don't get it. Seems pretty decent. I kind of just want to take the queen and even out the pieces, but maybe we can be a bit greedier here. There's a potential fork here, but because it's a knight, that doesn't help. Knight versus knight, knight just takey takey. Hmm. So that's not great. What about queen takes? Does that lead to more opportunities? Queen takes bishop b2. Queen to d7. Knight to d6. Doesn't seem bad. So yeah, either queen takes bishop or knight takes queen. I'm down with either. What is black trying to do in this situation? I'm very, very confused. What is that bishop about? What is that bishop about? And also, if you're ahead, why didn't you, and if you know you can do a pin, why didn't you do the pin? Very confusing. Hmm. hmm. Very weird. If we're we evening out a little bit, might as well just keep the queen on the board, though. Uh, instead of evening out to a simpler position, especially since his pawns are pushed a little bit closer to mine. Staying away from the end game for a little bit longer is probably good. All right, let's do that. Nope, that's wrong. All right, take the queen. And then what? Da, da, da. And then that. Okay. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Oh, didn't think about that. That's much better than my calculation. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to end up... Uh, hmm, interesting. If I'm going to end up queen to rook, then yeah, that's 
solidly better. Much better. Okay. So my calculations were off there. So I'm wrong. Four? Shit. But I am not doing well today on these forks. Maybe I should stick to forks for a little bit longer. Um, where was the fork on that one? I don't even know. I'm very confused. But that's okay. These puzzles are just incredibly hard, even if they're fork puzzles. Which some of them I don't feel like they're basic fork, uh, fork puzzles, but damn. Still, fucking damn, dude. Hmm. Well, that's alright. Calculations are good anyway. I would say... That was number 9. We're only on puzzle number 10 as well. We are taking like 10 minutes on each of these puzzles, and it's still insanely hard. Uh, but yeah, I would say for exactly the kind of thing I want to be doing to get uh, really dipping into the forks, it's not happening very much in this case. However, uh, puzzles are puzzles, and practicing these line calculations and seeing where my weaknesses are isn't a bad thing either. Uh, with that being said, what the fuck are we doing? So, something I see is like rook takes knight, pawn takes, then there's knight to g5, and that comes with the threat of a uh, mate very quickly. How is that met? Oh, I guess with pawn to f5. Which then would be met with knight takes bishop. Wow, is it that simple? That looks really good. Rook takes. Pawn takes is the only way to go as a defender. Knight to f5. Only way to defend against this. is yeah pawn to pawn to f5 but bishop's lost its um defender so knight just takes that silly boy and then uh all of the pieces yep cool yay i got one right mama i got one right jesus these are Maybe I'm just in a dumb, dumb mode today. Maybe I'm not calculating very well, but a lot of these feel slightly more challenging than I would normally imagine them to be. Yeah, who knows? All right, White's made a move. It's Black's turn. I am in a good lord dangerous situation. Queen's able to get on my back rank. There's a knight. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um. So, is there some kind of in-between thing that I can do to push this guy away? Mm. There is queen to e3, which can be met easily by uh, king to h1. Mm. There is queen takes rook. Does that give us anything if we do queen takes rook? Queen takes rook, king takes rook. And then there's knight to e3. So, yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. And then after all of that happens, I would take the queen. Then the pawn would take the knight. Then I could take this knight here and tr hopefully trade that around as well, which seems good. All right. Cool. Neat. Okay. This one's very simple. Rook takes bishop. Pawn takes rook. Bishop to c4. Double attack on the rook. And the king. Is that good? 
This doesn't seem good. This is terrible. That's a bad calculation on my part. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's a bad calculation on my part. So what if you take here? Okay. And you're going to, really, really, you're going to do this. Really. How do you figure? Oh, I guess you're on time. Huh. For some reason, I thought you wouldn't be on time. Should have just thought it out a little bit more. Oh, I wouldn't be on time if it wasn't my turn. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Uh, our turn. I can take this knight. I can take this knight. If queen takes my queen, then we have a royal fork. So there you go. That one's too easy. Wow, these puzzles go from like way too easy to incredibly hard. Um, that knight is going to take my pawns. I want those pawns. Uh, there's knight takes bishop, king takes knight, and then I can do that do the bishop to the e e6 check and then the king and the knight on g4 would be yeah would be in a little bit of a difficult position because they'd both be attacked okay i think that was number 14 if i looked correctly at what was going on um okay what is going on in this situation Bishop takes, rook takes. Pawn to c4. Queen takes bishop. Queen queen takes queen. Rook takes rook, rook takes rook. So that yeah, that would be bad for him. Bishop takes rook takes d5 c4 uh yeah that looks like the right answer actually there's just some weird sounds outside i don't give all right 15 so yeah if this happens then the queen has to move somewhere then we get a free rook. Nice. Nito Frito. Hmm, let's see what we have here. I like the idea of bishop takes f7. That looks good. Queen's kind of in the way, however. Not exactly sure what's going on in this puzzle. <laughs> oh, my queen's in danger. That's what's going on in this puzzle. Wow, that took me a second. Okay, queen has to do something. Knight take seems pretty good. Just be like, no, don't take it. Um, knight takes. Bishop takes. We also have bishop to d3. Bishop d3, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop. 
and we get to maintain lane, uh, this diagonal on uh, B1 to H7, which is very important. It's uh, controlling his flight square. And especially since the rooks aren't coordinated right now, pressing on the rooks would be pretty decent. The simpler answer right now is just to take that bishop, but I don't necessarily see... Well, what if knight takes... Knight takes bishop e4, rook takes bishop e4, uh, bishop to d3. Then if rook moves back, we have... no, we don't have that. Hmm. Interesting. Not exactly sure what we have here. Also, don't see the double attack. Hmm. Knight takes? Rook takes? Oh, bishop to d5, double attack. Bishop attacking both of the rooks on the long diagonal, h1, a8 diagonal. Yeah, there we go. That would be the issue there. Okay, it took me a second, but I got it in the end. I got it, I got it. Wow, there is a lot going on here. Crap. We have quite an armada on the B to D file, that's for sure. <laughs> what exactly is going on though? Hmm, Rook takes Rook. Rook takes rook b7, king takes rook b7, then what? Do we have anything good from there? I don't think so. I don't see anything quite good. There's also rook to d4. Queen's fairly trapped. But she can go to a2. Rook to d4. Uh, queen to a2. But then there's queen takes c6. Check. King to b7 is met by checkmate. So king to d8 is met by me taking a rook. Queen to a1 check. King to d uh, d2. And then checkmate is coming real soon. Hmm. Interesting. So that seems really good, but I don't see any kind of double attacks or anything. Any shenanigans like that from there? Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Hmm. Interesting. Can the knight join in the fun somehow? I don't see it. I don't see it immediately. If rook were to take rook, and king takes rook, and then our knight was somehow on c5, that would be good. But the path to c5 is uh, a bit slow bit slow so I don't think that's it hmm. so I don't think the knight's going to be coming into this puzzle rook d4 seems super good though am I wrong? rook d4 seems pretty winning
like no matter what happens, rook d4, bishop comes in whatever or something, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen still has to do some shit, like has to move away, then we still have uh, queen takes e6, plus rook on the b-file, which is really, really strong. Rook to d4. I really like it. I really, really like it. There's also rook to a3, which might almost mm, not as, eh, about as good. There is one flight square for this queenie queen. Is there something with the rook takes rook on b7 that I'm not seeing? Rook takes rook on b7, king takes. I don't see it. Hmm. I think I'm going to do rook take rook to d4. I think it's probably the wrong move, but kind of want to see. Yeah, it's the wrong move. Rook takes rook is the right move. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, um, maybe I'm just missing something obvious in that line. Like, what happens if this happens? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Then he has that b5 square that he can go to. I see. So not as strong as I thought. Where does this lead? Where is the double attack here? Uh, oh, 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 okay. What's going on? I have no idea what's going on here. What is this about? All right, let's say that that. What? Where does that leave? Oh, then the double attack there. What? What the fuck? Hmm. I'm confused. My brain, it don't work so good. Very confused today. A lot of confusing things happening today, and I'm not exactly sure how to deal with that. This one is fairly easy. Uh, this knight, defended by the bishop, but not really, overloaded on two things. Having to defend this knight and also control this f3 square. If the bishop doesn't control the f3 square, then there's uh, the royal fork with the knight on the king and the queen from f3. So that knight is free. Man, it just goes from like really crazy puzzles to fairly simple things. I don't know. Okay, rook takes knight here. If king takes uh, rook on e8, then there's knight to f7. If a rook takes rook on e8, then there's rook to d6. Just a very well-placed knight and ill-placed uh, pieces on the opponent's side in that puzzle. If we take, then the queen takes, and they're about to check me. Then they're about to checkmate. However, at that point, well, there's also a fork here that's p possible. That would just negate all of that immediately. Hmm. 
So do we want to do the fork there? Or do we want to take the rook? Take the rook. Queen takes pawn. And then queen to c5. And then queens have to trade. That seems good. We're up a rook. Cool. This is the line I'm thinking of. This has to happen. Mm, yeah, I'd go that way. Cool. All right, that was number 20. We have five more. We have five more. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Bishop takes, pawn takes. If bishop takes, pawn takes, then there's queen to d2. Queen to d2. Um, queen blocks on f2. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, bishop takes, pawn takes. Then there's queen to c2. Yeah. Queen to c2, if queen comes, then we have uh, c5, double attack. If bishop takes, queen takes, then we still have that attack. And if the queen doesn't block here, then that's terrible as well. Okay. On my own, pretending he's without me. Okay, so if queen goes to h4, king goes to g8. And I don't see a thing from there. If rook goes to h5, there's rook to h6. Don't see anything there either. If rook takes rook, queen takes rook. Oh, if rook takes rook, queen takes rook. And then there's queen h4. And if king moves away, I get rook. If queen blocks, then I get a rook. So a lot of queen stuff going on in these puzzles. I'm white with a queen. I'm guessing it's going to be another double attack with a queen kind of situation. Rook takes rook. Rook takes rook. That's the only thing we can do. Rook takes rook. Rook takes rook check and then I get a bishop. Number 24, we're almost done. Hmm. This one's a bit trickier. Oh. Oh, my queen is here, too. Cray-cray. All right. There is a lot of potential here, yeah. Um, bishop takes. Queen has to take. 
queen can't take my rook. If bishop takes and queen takes, then I just lose, win, lose. Bishop takes, queen has to take. Double tack on the queen. And that, yep. Oh, that's not the answer? Oh, I'm wrong. I was so sure of myself. I was so sure of myself. What happens if this happens? Oh, I'm a dum dum. That's what happens. Yeah. Right on, right on, you shiny diamonds. Interesting. Because if she does this, then this is terrible. I guess not too terrible. So I thought it was a very soon mate situation, but I guess it really isn't. So what's the issue here? Why is this bad? Uh, why don't I just move? Oh. Uh, So why don't I just move here then? Fair enough. Fair enough. So defending this F3 pawn becomes an issue, huh? All right. Oh, 20 out of 24. But in reality, I think I got like four plus wrong. So Jesus, like 16 out of 24 today so far. It hasn't been a good day. It's been a hard one. They've been difficult. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm embarrassed. No, things are well. Things are well. Bishop takes bishop. Pawn takes bishop e5. Rook takes rook. Rook takes rook. Double attack potential with the queen from there? Mm, I don't see it. Hmm. Bishop to g6. Bishop to g6, bishop, or bishop to h6, bishop to g7. No. Uh, nah. Nah, brah. Nah. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. And I don't quite see it. Oh, Jesus. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, queen takes f7, king to h8. Uh, that's queen to h8. Rook's on d7? Yeah, rook's on d7. Uh, king to h8. King to h8. Ah, so close. So close. So damn close. King, oh, king to h8. Queen to f6. Attack on the rook and the king then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, if that happened, this would happen. And that would be bad. I'm pretty sure that's the line they wanted me to calculate. So bishop takes, pawn takes, go. Then rook takes. And if rook takes, then yeah, that's forced lines. So the right move after bishop takes is just ignore that and it would be a free bishop at that point. And not only that, we are getting eerily close to dangerous lines here. Ooh. Oh yeah, pinning that pawn while moving in. Gonna have to sacrifice that rook. Yep. That. Then we come back here. 
and we're at a we're at a major piece advantage. All right, so 21 out of 25 minus like four or five that I actually got wrong. So I'm at like 16 out of 25 today, which I don't think is a great score. 16 times four is uh, six times four is 24, so 64 percent today. That's not great. 64 percent. Uh, it's and it was a rather long episode. There are just a lot of long calculation lines that I didn't quite understand or see. Uh, they're tricky. They're tricky. And maybe I'm a little bit tired today as well. So that might have been it. But the forks today were not so good. And if I'm going to be jumping between tactical motifs, um, maybe it might be good to start keeping track of how I'm doing. Like if while I was expecting my training to go very steadily on focusing on each tactical motif until I mastered it, there wasn't really need to track too many different things. But if we're going for a breadth, then some kind of tracking is going to be necessary. So next time, this is what I'll do. I'll have something prepared where we'll have a table of some sort uh, with all of the tactical motifs and we're going to have the uh, the sessions when we do each tactical motif and we'll take notes about how it went and why it went wrong. For instance, if I'm getting wrong answers uh, because my calculations for endgame or just for seeing mate potentials or whatever are wrong, we can start kind of tabulating that data to see where my weaknesses are uh, and to see if, 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 it's, uh, if I'm getting them wrong specifically because I'm not getting the tactical motif or because I'm just not understanding some other external force that I haven't taken into account. So I think that would be quite nice. Um, if you've watched this all the way through, thanks for watching with me. Today was a difficult one, and it, was, uh, it wasn't very entertaining, but I hope you enjoyed it. These definitely are hard sometimes, but I think what's really important to realize as somebody who's practicing is that the hard days, although they might demotivate you a little bit, sometimes are what push you to that next level which is uh, can be demotivating in of itself but uh, or maybe it can be motivating sometimes the hard practice days are really kind of what you need to figure out what other things you need to work on as well as uh, figuring out or uh, just making that mind or body depending on what you're trying to improve in uh, just uh, push you to the parts that are necessary? I don't know. Anyway, some fucking eagle flying in the air, soaring freedom, motivational, whatever, bullshit. Uh, that being said, next time, what did I promise? I promised that we would uh, do overloads. I think that'll be a lot of fun. We'll do one move overload puzzles, and we'll have the data tabulation for all of the tactical motifs that we think are relevant and who knows maybe actually we'll do a little bit of beginning uh, what what's the word we'll do some cursory cursory research yeah introductory research in the beginning of that video to see what are the broad generalized tactical motifs that uh the basic ones you know not not attraction not diversion maybe those are ones we'll have to work on but uh yeah we'll take a look at that and i know the perfect place we're going to look at that that's on a really awesome site that i've only taken a small look at and i feel like is just wonderful for beginners and should we should take a look at that as well um, actually, we'll look at two sources. So, yeah, next week we'll research two tactical motif books. Basically, one's online, one's in Kindle form. We'll see what tactical motifs we want to focus on. Uh, and then we will 
make a little table for tabulating data and then we'll do overloading puzzles and since we're going to be doing so much we'll do like 10 overloading puzzles just as an introduction for myself so yeah a lot of things going on in the next video so i hope you guys come back for that and thank you to the people that subscribe thanks again that's really awesome i'm really happy about that and if you watch this video fucking comment in it and thumbs down or whatever i don't care uh yeah have a good day